Diabetes do's and don'ts are often all over the map. Dr. Ed Gear joins us today with some straightforward advice. I'm Ron Caparelli, and this is House Calls. So you've just been diagnosed with diabetes, and now you'll have to give up that glass of wine with dinner or your favorite dessert, right? Well, not necessarily. There are many myths about diabetes, and living with this disease may not be as hard as you think. To set the record straight and hopefully give back the foods and the wine that you love, we turn to LifeScript's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Ed Gear. Ed, good morning. Good morning, Ron. Okay, before we go any further, I cannot imagine a day without a couple of oatmeal cookies in the afternoon, glass of wine with dinner. Do I have to give that up for good or not? You don't have to give up everything, but what you do have to do is start counting what you are taking. So what you do is keep track of the carbohydrates and make sure that you're getting a balanced portion of carbohydrates throughout the day. But you don't have to give up everything because you're a diabetic. So is sugar the only type of food that raises blood sugar levels? No, any carbohydrate can raise blood sugar levels. So complex carbohydrates, rice, grains, cereals, all of those things, nuts, can raise uh, blood sugar levels. So it's not just sugar consumed in your diet, it's any carbohydrate. What about fruits? pastas, other kind of foods? Yeah, so fruits are contain natural sugars. So that is a sugar and that will also raise your levels. And of course, pasta is a kind of grain and that will raise your blood sugar level. Alcohol? Alcohol absolutely is, uh, is a, another form. Uh, and it, won't, it doesn't affect your blood sugar level quite as much, but you do have to take it into consideration. So what is the best diet for somebody who has diabetes? Well, there's a lot of debate about that, but Probably the simplest way to describe it is the Mediterranean diet, where you it's low carbohydrates and a good mix of fruits, vegetables, nuts, legumes, some fish, some chicken, and lean meats. And of course, red wine, right? And of course, an occasional. Glass okay, let's of red talk wine. more specifically. Um, the popular vegan diet, good or bad? Uh, vegan diet is not bad, uh, but it it you do actually you still have to count your carbohydrates, so right. it doesn't. You don't get away from having to count. So classic low carbohydrate diets, the Atkins diet, things like that, is that good then? Yeah, generally it's good for diabetics because it is low on carbohydrates. But don't, make, don't believe that just because you're not getting carbohydrates that you're not getting calories on board too. And speaking of which, sugar-free foods, not necessarily calorie-free, so in moderation there too. You're exactly. not going to lose weight that way. Exactly, because it's all got calories at the end of the day. Now, when your blood sugar drops during the day, assuming you're checking during the day your blood sugar drops, okay to just have candy to raise it or a chocolate bar or something like that? Generally, uh, if that's the only thing you've got, yes. But the preferred thing to do is to have to take a glucose paste or gel with you that you can consume in a very specific amount and that allows you then to measure your blood sugar and not overshoot by consuming a lot of additional candy. Some people see the low blood sugar level as an excuse to consume things they probably shouldn't have. I got it. And um, what about women? Uh, if you have diabetes, okay to become pregnant? Any problems there? Well, absolutely it's okay to become pregnant, but you are at risk uh, of some additional complications and controlling and managing your diabetes will get more difficult during the pregnancy. That's why it's very important to be closely followed by your doctor, your gynecologist, and endocrinologist during your pregnancy. Now, do all diabetics use insulin? No, not all, not all of them do. Um, typically, type 1 diabetics rely on insulin because they don't make any insulin anymore. However, type 2 diabetics can be controlled sometimes with diet, uh, sometimes they just need some oral medication, but the most severe cases will also require insulin. So if I'm on insulin, though, it's not the end of the world, right? I mean, it's, it's, can't, it doesn't have to be that cumbersome to maintain, right? No, I mean, but people with diabetics who take insulin can lead relatively normal lives, levels of activity and so forth. It's just that they need to develop a routine for checking and for taking their insulin and know when they're varying from that routine and respond accordingly. So a lot of people think the best thing you can do also is lose weight. If you lose weight, you know, chances are your diabetes will become a little bit better. Is that true? Is it as simple as that? It, it is true for type 2 diabetes because the most common cause of type 2, two diabetes is obesity. Type 1 diabetics 
you do want to control your weight for other reasons, that is, for protecting your heart and your nervous system, but it won't affect your diabetes. But type 2, absolutely. In fact, there are type 2 diabetics that lose their, di their diabetes altogether because they lose weight. Okay, and does the, what about the progression of the disease? Does diabetes always get worse? Can it be cured? What's the, the prognosis for somebody, say, who's just been diagnosed? Type 1 diabetics, there is no cure, unfortunately. And um, then they have to be on insulin and they have to be measuring their blood sugars during the day. Um, type 2 diabetics, as I mentioned, um, they can reverse their diabetes by losing weight and taking care of themselves and eating a regular diet. Okay. And um, what about sort of quality of life? Is it a normal lifespan for somebody with the disease? Uh, any special things, complications that crop up to be, to be aware of? Yeah, so type 1 diabetics on average uh, live 10 to 20 years less than people without diabetes. Type, right. type 2 diabetics, maybe 5 to 10 years less. It's highly variable based on how well you take care of yourself. The people who die young are the ones that haven't been in good control of their blood sugar. So you can absolutely extend and have a relatively normal lifespan if you're carefully controlling your diabetes. And how do you know to go to the doctor? What's the first or classic warning sign that, hey, I may be developing this disease now? The classic sign is excess thirst and frequency of urination. So you notice you're drinking a lot, you feel thirsty all the time, and you're going to the bathroom a lot. That's the classic early sign. Along with that, you could get some fatigue, some blurriness of vision, maybe some tingling in your hands or feet. Uh, it can be very subtle, but the thirst and urination are the classic signs of diabetes. And when you talk about myths and misconceptions, you know, everybody conjures up these ideas of losing limbs and you know, going blind and all of that kind of stuff, this disease can be managed, and that's not always the end result, It's correct? not always the end result, and it's a matter of careful management of your diabetes with good uh, checking, regular checking of your blood sugar levels and then the administration of the medication you're on. Okay, and as always, if you have diabetes or you think you have diabetes, important to consult your physician before trying to take matters into your own hands here, correct? Absolutely. Have, let the doctor help guide you through this process. All right, Dr. Ed Gear, thanks again as always. You're welcome. And for more information on diabetes, visit our Diabetes Health Center at www.lifescript.com. On our next installment of Living with Diabetes, we look at ways to prevent the disease. For now, from Los Angeles, I'm Ron Caparelli. Thanks for watching.